Hello! Have you ever encountered an equation you could not solve? So did Italian mathematicians in the 16th century when looking at the cubic equation x cubed plus px plus q equals zero. They discovered a formula to solve this equation. As you can see on the slide, it is rather ugly. Let us simplify it a bit by setting q equals zero. The equation becomes x cubed plus px equals zero, so x equals zero is always a solution. And as long as p is greater than zero, the formula indeed evaluates to zero. But what happens to our formula if p equals minus one? We have to take the square root of a negative number. Fortunately, if we are willing to calculate with square roots of negative numbers, the solution x equals zero pops out as before. This video is about complex numbers, numbers which involve square roots of negative numbers. It turns out the only extra number you need is i, whose square equals minus one. When you first encounter them, these complex numbers seem really strange. Indeed, Cardano, who first published this formula and discovered complex numbers, spent many pages considering many different cases just to avoid using square roots of negative numbers. The real numbers are the numbers that you already know, where we do not use i, whereas complex numbers will be those that you can make using i as well. Let us see what a general complex number looks like. We want to be able to add, multiply, etc. complex numbers. So we do not just want to consider the number i, but also multiples of i. Say, i times y, for some real number y. And since we want to be able to add, we also consider the addition x plus i times y for real numbers x and y. Complex numbers are by definition all numbers z, which can be written as x plus i times y with x and y real numbers. These numbers consist of two parts. x is called the real part of z and y is called the imaginary part of z. For example, 2 plus i is a complex number with real part 2 and imaginary part 1. It is important to realize that we study complex numbers to find real solutions to real problems. You do not want to have a final solution to a problem which still contains i, as you do not know what that means. However, you do want to be able to use complex numbers in intermediate steps, as this allows you to solve problems that you cannot otherwise solve. In particular, complex numbers often arise in applications that involve periodicity, such as vibrations, waves and the mass spring system. We can now compute with complex numbers just as with real numbers. We can add, we can subtract, we can multiply, and the answer can always be written in the form x plus i times y. The general idea is to just make the calculation assuming i is just any other number, and whenever you encounter i squared, you replace it by minus one. Let us look how this works in some examples. If we add two complex numbers, to minus three i and one plus two i, we just add the real parts and the imaginary parts. Two plus one plus minus three plus two i. The result, three minus i, is already of the form x plus i times y, so we are done. Subtraction is similar. We subtract both the real and the imaginary parts, and the result is of the desired form. Multiplication, however, is more difficult. The multiplication is defined by expanding the product as usual. So here we get 2 plus 4i minus 3i minus 6i squared. Now we use the convention 
that i squared equals minus 1. To find 2 plus 6 for the real part and 4 minus 3 for the imaginary part, which yields 8 plus i. You can also write the quotient of two complex numbers in the form x plus i times y. How? You will learn that in class. Let us now try to find a visual way of thinking about complex numbers. You know that you can use the number line to represent all real numbers. Every real number has a spot on this line. Zero is in the middle, not so far as an infinite line has a middle. One is slightly to the right of zero, minus one slightly to the left of zero, and one half in between zero and one. But where would you place i? It does not really fit on the line, as you want, for example, that points close together on the line have squares which are also close together. But no point on the number line has a square close to i squared equals minus one. Thus, there is no other option than to place i next to the line and we choose to put it right above the zero. Now we know where i is, but i is not the only complex number. Where do we put other complex numbers? It seems natural to put one half i halfway between zero and i, and to put minus i below zero. In this way, we place all multiples of i on a vertical line through zero. We now have two lines which can serve as axes of a plane. Where in the plane shall we place one plus i? Well, you want to start at one and move upwards to the same height as i. We can now formally introduce the complex analog of the number line. The complex plane is a plane on which we visualize all complex numbers. The number a plus b times i is located at coordinates a comma b. Thus two minus i is located at coordinates two comma minus one, and minus two plus i at coordinates minus two comma one. The horizontal axis of the complex plane contains all real numbers. It is therefore called the real axis and it's basically just the ordinary number line. The vertical axis is called the imaginary axis, as it contains all real multiples of i, also called the imaginary numbers. One of the reasons why it is so convenient to think about complex numbers in the complex plane is that there is a very nice geometric rule for the product of two complex numbers. In class, you will learn more about that. But now, it's time for you to do some real complex calculations.